Hi, this is Everett, Everett's Watercolors. Welcome to my classroom. Now today I'm going to do a card from start to finish. And you can see the setup over here on my left over here. It's the Mayflowers by Gina K Designs. I took the stamp set and I used uh, also Gina K uh, products. I used the uh, 120 pound heavyweight cardstock and I used the Warm Glow Amalga, Amalga ink to uh, do the presentation. Now I started out with here at watercolors and I'm going to finish it up with watercolors and then uh, we're going to put uh, an incentive on top of that and we'll do a die cut and I'll show you the complete product at the end of this video. So let's go to my painting table and let's get started. Yeah, I'm putting a watercolor, a whole bunch of watercolor using yellow, putting on this flower. I started with one so I thought I'd go ahead and finish it. I'll put a little bit of, take the filming up a little bit. Uh, leave a little bit of white, a little bit of white paper showing for the highlights on the petals. There's a mixture of uh, yellow lemon and uh, a yellow deep, and a little bit of quinacridone gold. So it's a combination of different yellows I have in my palette. I thought I would start out with this combination with a small number eight round brush because the detail is a small area so I'm putting it in here and I'm going to do all the flowers uh, in yellow uh, with, a, with a dark center this will take a little time because there's uh, little little spaces here but what I'm doing is I'm coloring in uh, going around the outline a little bit then I'm leaving a little bit of white paper showing for highlights just uh, little little places of white just for little highlights to give a little a little interest just a little touch leave a little white just a little white showing on each one of the petals not all the petals but a lot of the petals leave a little white paper showing for a little bit of highlights gives a little bit of interest to the uh, design and so forth And I'll go back in later and put a little, little shadow, shade, shade some of the petals so they give a little dimension. So I'm going to continue on with this, uh, putting the yellow on the petals, and uh, I'll come back here when I'm finished and show you what, show you what it looks like when it's done. Okay, I'm almost finished. I thought I'd bring it back here to show you, uh, uh, just finishing up the last couple of flowers here putting the same color on the petals the yellow mixture I have here and leaving a little bit of white paper for highlights now I'm going to go around now and just touch up the edges a little bit to see get the Okay, got the yellow applied, let that dry. This is uh, Gina K paper, 120, 120 uh, pound weight uh, cardstock. And uh, I'm putting this uh, card together with, uh, start out with the yellow. Now I'm going to add in the centers. A little bit of burnt sienna. So I'm going to put a little bit of burnt sienna here in the, in the center of these little, little dudes. So the centers are going to be a little bit of burnt sienna. I'll put a little, a little bit of burnt sienna. And I got a little bit of uh, cornucopium violet over here. I might put that in just to get a little, a little more, a little more color. We'll start out with a burnt sienna. Get that in the centers of the flowers. I get them started here. I guess, uh, with this watercolor, you have to uh, let it go in. It's uh, got to sit there and dry just a little bit. 
There's 100, uh, 120 pounds. It's the first time I've tried this. Uh, what do call it? This uh, paper here. Uh, this seems to be doing pretty well with the watercolor. Some papers are so thin that the uh, watercolor uh, doesn't go well because it destroys the, the fiber in the paper. So you need a nice heavy duty paper in order to do watercolor properly. Okay, I got the centers there started. Now there's one more over here. This little one over here. Let's see this facing this way. Yeah, facing out. Okay. So then the magenta, well, excuse me, uh, it used to be called uh, magenta, but now it's called uh, quinacridone violet. The uh, get used to the get used to the paint names over years, and quinacridone violet. So beautiful color. So I'm going to put a little bit of just a little bit here. I start off with this one. This is my my big one over here. So I'll put a little bit of color in there. So quinacridone violet on top of the burnt sienna. Just adding a little, just adding a few touches here, following the design of the uh, stamp. There's a few lines there, so I'm just kind of adding a little accents here in the center of the flower. Give a little character. Put that quinacridone ball right in the middle where it's darker. Make that the darkest spot. Okay. I can let that dry before I go back and do anything else. You know, uh, that's dry. Now we're going to add a little bit of green to the leaves. So mix up a little bit of green number two. I have green number one and green number two. Green number two is like a medium, like a medium green. And then I'll go in and capture some of those shapes. So I'm going to continue on putting the green in there, so uh, let me, uh, I'll stop the film and keep going, I'll come back and show you the results. So I'll go part way around, but I thought I'd start the film again and show you all I'm doing is putting the, the green leaves using green number two watercolor. And uh, the paper seems to be handling it very nicely. This 120 pound watercolor paper is doing very nice. Uh, work, this cardstock paper is doing very good. So I'm just, just treating it almost like uh, watercolor paper. I'm trying to be a little bit careful with extra water, but letting it flow. Just let the, put the watercolor in the area. It's still a little bit wet and just let it dry on its own. It's going to dry a little bit lighter than. Uh, the color you see when you put it down wet, it always, watercolor always gets lighter when it dries. It looks a lot darker. Okay, I'll continue on around. Let me stop now and uh, I'll continue on and come back later. Okay, I completed. Now, what I noticed that uh, as the watercolor dries, it's still, it gets lighter. So I'm going to put a little bit of uh, Hooker's Green now, which is my darker green. And I'm going to add 
a slight touch of blue to make it even darker. So hooker's green with a little, with a little bit, a little bit of blue in it, and I'm going to go in and right around the, next to the flower, I'm going to put a little darker, just a darker little edge showing a little shadow maybe on the petal. find the edge of that flower petal but also to give a little shadow little shadow pattern so the shadow color is green because of the of the subject is green leaves but it's a darker value to give it the idea of a shadow. So a shadow is always a darker color, a little touch of blue, because it's cooler. A shadow is a cooler color, so adding blue gives you a cooler, a cooler value. So green, adding a little bit of blue gives you a cool green, and then that gives you the shadow color. And that defines those edges a little bit better around the flower. Also gives you a little impression of a of a shadow. Anyway, the last two here. That finishes up the uh, leaves and. Uh, I might go back and do a little more touch on the flowers just to give a little more a little more depth, a little more dimension. Okay. We'll let that dry for a minute. Okay, my last step on the flowers here is I'm going to uh, add a color, a little dark, a little darker color around those separate some of those petals, a little more definition. So I'll use a little bit darker orange here. Along that was a deep, deep yellow. Now I add the touch of orange, maybe some of that deeper yellow, Quinacridone yellow. And I'll go in now and separate some of these petals on the flowers, just just to give it a little de more definition. making some of the edges a little darker, showing a little bit of separation of the petals. Not, not too much, just enough, just a hint that this, that show a little definition. Separate the petal a little bit with adding a little color around the edges. Separate the uh, shapes of the petals. Give a little more definition. Okay. I'm adding a little more touches here. <clears throat> There's some um, some lines here on the 
on the stamp, so I'm adding in some of those lines. A little definition of the petals. I think they add a little more character. Okay, don't want to overdo that, but just enough, just enough to give it some more, some more definition. Okay, at this stage I'm going to do the uh, die cut of the card. And what, what I have is I have the uh, background card size for A2 from the cardstock. And then I also have a master layout from uh, Gina K to do the border. So those two are already set up and then I've got my uh, die cut from uh, master layout number two number one from Gina K and what I do is I'm going to line this up where I'm going to have to uh, cut off a little bit of it on one side so I lay it out the way I want make sure I don't have a tangent down here to side I have to take a little piece off over there but that's that's what's going to happen then I have a little piece of uh, Washi tape to hold it down in place. Double check to make sure it's okay. Then I put the, the cover on top, the top plate. Okay, now I'll run this through the die machine and uh, I'll put the card together and I'll come back and show you the results. Well, I finished the card. This is the finished card that I had. You make me smile with the flowers and uh, I put it together with the help of my wife, Gloria, and it turned out very nice. So I hope you enjoy. I call this uh, card making project Yellow Flowers using the uh, Mayflower stamp set from Gina K. Now the materials provided by Gina K were the Mayflowers stamp set, the 120 pound cardstock, the amalgam ink warm glow, and the master layout number one die. The Holbein watercolor paints and the silver brush number 8 round are available on my website, everswatercolors.com. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel and press the bell to be notified of my next video. Give me a thumbs up, it helps with my rating. And leave me some comments and questions about today's video and I'll get back to you uh, with my reply. See you on the next video.